Well, well, ladies and gentlemen, Hero was thinking that Gabby Hanna could not sink any lower. All of the kerfuffle with her sister, crying about being a victim of bullying, even though she was the bully. Well, Gabby, here is a gift from me to you for being extremely courageous. <laughs> wow, you'd actually accept that? I made this with a leaf and some stones I found in the back garden and I glued them together. How low are your standards? Even more so now that she's specifically been targeting a few YouTubers over multiple videos. She referred to them as chapters. Well, that was clever of you. Well, allow me, Gabby. The mythical tales of the fallen poetry. Now in cinemas. <laughs> But recently she's been targeting YouTubers like Joy Graceffa, Angelica Oles, Trisha Paytas, etc. That's why in this video we're going to be covering the most important videos that Gabby has released. Breaking it into my very own chapters. And the funny bit about this, ladies and gentlemen, is that... Most of the videos pack fire to... <laughs> Imagine making a destruction of YouTuber series, but the destruction is about you. If it was me, that's it, I'm having it. I'm going on a diet. I can't take it anymore. Twinkies only for the next two months. However, Gabby released a very unexpected video titled Chapter 4, Escape the Nightmare, which is about a TV show she was a part of and how everyone was apparently horrible to her, mainly trying to cancel Joey Graceffa. <gasps> the most drama-involved YouTuber you could ask for. That's just like putting a basket into a trolley. It's disgusting. You are the filth of the modern day. You were the reason why this world is ending. Well, that's enough of that for now, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to begin Chapter 1. So recently, ladies and gentlemen, Gabby Hanna surprised us all by releasing a video on another YouTuber. But Gabby released this video mainly targeting Joey Graceffa and Daniel Preda. And of course, as we know, Joey never involves himself in drama. This YouTuber's been around for decades, longer than I've been alive. I'm 20, so... Now, Gabby Hanna was originally on season one of Escape the Night, and she claimed that it was a horrible experience, that she would never go back there ever again. And according to her, people begged her to go back for season 4. But she wasn't sure due to the horrible experience in season 1. Now obviously she went back to season 4. Um, why would you do that if the first one was horrible? Except she came with a lot of demands. A lot of requirements that needed to be met. Ordering packages. Package. My big package. Shut up. And Gabby's demands were as follows. There will be a variety of healthy foods. Enough for 3 meals a day. As she's on a strict diet. And will get really unwell and pissed off with everyone if needs are not met. And you know what? Daniel said, no problem. He was wrong. There were problems. More problems. A lot more. <laughs> oh, she didn't like how the food wasn't frequent enough. She didn't like how when she turned up there was no food there waiting for her. And she didn't like that when she arrived there was no nice smooth ass red carpet rolled out for her. Champagne! Champagne for everyone! She was mad that she had to wear high heels. She was mad that she had to play sports out in the cold. And she was also mad that her dress was too tight. <gasps> I can't believe my $15,000 dress is too tight! Kill myself! You know what, Gabby? A lot of people don't have the privilege to be on a movie set. Like me. I'm on a movie set. It's my bedroom. Now, who seems like the nightmare so far, ladies and gentlemen? Gabby Hanna or Joey Graceffa and Daniel Preda? Because according to Daniel Preda, Gabby was the one who was a nightmare on set. And tell me, ladies and gentlemen, what do you do when a YouTuber who's never involved in drama releases a video on you? I.e. Joey Graceffa. Now, Joey's mentioned before that apparently season one was a horrible experience because of one single person. He never name-dropped, but Daniel did, because Daniel has balls. Now, obviously, Joey Graceffa's responded to Gabby's video, um, but wait until you see what else she's complaining about. That wasn't the only thing. No, no, there's, there's more. Filming time was a problem, ladies and gentlemen. Complaining that she felt like she didn't need to go into work so early. And apparently, because of all this, ladies and gentlemen, Gabby Hanna blew her top off at everyone, including Joey Graceffa. Now, this obviously led to Gabby Hanna being written off the show due to exploding on everyone. However, she did actually, you know, plead an apology to Daniel and Joey. Um, yeah, but the, the catch, there was a catch. She wanted an apology in return um, because her needs weren't met. A public apology. <laughs> now, if I'm not mistaken, ladies and gentlemen, Gabby's the kind of person who expects something in return. She is so privileged that she thinks that if she gives a homeless man a 10p or a fucking dollar, she's going to expect a fucking Rolls Royce in return. Sorry, it's a homeless man. You don't have money. Now, as I mentioned, Gabby has released a video, and Joey, who's never involved with drama, tweets this. LMAO, always playing the victim. I've been very silent about how truly awful she was on set, but if this is the game she wants to play, let's play. Well, you've been told, haven't you? Oh, yeah. 
I'm never doing that again. But the greatest thing about this, ladies and gentlemen, is that the other crew members involved of Escape the Night actually defended Joey publicly, tweeting how apparently Joey and Daniel were so nice to them and accommodating. And another YouTuber who stood out who never involves themselves in drama is Rosanna Pacino. Pancino. Pancino. I think that's how you say it. God, help me. A YouTuber with 12.9 million subscribers actually tweeted this. Breaking apart. Gabby's behaviour. The crew is also very professional, organised and hardworking. I don't like drama, but Gabby's video paints an untruthful picture of what happened. Much of it is simply false. One. Gabby did not come to the three wardrobe fittings before filming. And two of my fittings, I was told Gabby was supposed to be there that day, but didn't show up. At this point, I could put up scaffolding and it still wouldn't save your career from falling. You've made a mess, Gabby. It's time to clean up, love. Now, Joey released a response claiming that she was the nightmare. Apparently, back in the day, they used to be good friends, but not anymore due to how she treated people on the set. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the plot twist. So, does everyone remember how Gabby was complaining about not having food on time? Not liking how frequent the food was? Well, this is gonna blow your nan's fucking socks off. According to Joey, Gabby Hanna never filled out her dietary restrictions. Oh, sorry, she did. You were meant to do it two or three days before, but, um, Gabby done it on the day. Alright everyone, we've received all your applications for your food. Your food will be over there on the table. Go and fetch. Uh, hey, excuse me. Uh, why haven't I had any food? Did you fill out the meals you wanted? Did you fill out your dietary restrictions? Well, yeah, I'm doing it now. What do you think I'm doing? Right. Food was ordered two days ago. Fuck out of my set. Every single person is sent a form days before we start filming to get people's medical information and their allergies and any food restrictions. Gabby didn't fill this out until the day we were on set. Miss Gabby, yes. can we do a little BTS? Of course. Yes. How is of course, she? Darling. Look at she's got her yellow hair on. We're doing. She's things. practicing her script. <laughs> <laughs> Filling out my medical information. <laughs> You're supposed to fill this out beforehand so we can get everything prepared and make sure that we have your your dietary restrictions accounted for. Oh, honestly, it's like turning up to a dog show and the referee goes, that's not a dog, that's a bloody pig, that is. <laughs> also, ladies and gentlemen, you wouldn't believe this, but she claimed that her dress was too tight. However, Joey said that she never complained about it once on set. And apparently she loved the outfit so much that they made a custom-made fit for her. New trainers, who dis? But it's fantastic because even though she didn't complain about it, um, she claimed it was tight. I don't know, Gabby, um, maybe that's because you never showed up to the fitting session where they choose your fit and measure you. Yeah, that was like three times and you missed like all three. What do you expect? With that said, ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to the third segment the of, of today's innovation. video. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. Don Valentine. Thank you for joining us tonight. We're in the Don Valentine HQ, as you can see, and we are very pleased to have you. Now, as time being my greatest concept, this is where we rewind back a little bit to Jesse Smiles. So believe it or not, Gabby Han actually dropped a chapter on Jesse Smiles regarding their three-hour phone call. Now, because of this, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse Smiles actually responded to the great Gabby Hanna. Now, if you haven't heard of Jesse Smiles before, then just check the link in the description. That video will explain everything about Jesse Smiles and Gabby Hanna. Now, at the start of Jessie's video, Jessie displays Gabby, claiming that she never, ever defended or associated herself with Jessie Smiles' ex-boyfriend, who done, uh, the worst thing you can imagine. Um, starts with R. Her ex-boyfriend was Curtis Lepore, of course. Not me, I'm Curtis Price, he is Curtis Lepore. I was the first Curtis on this earth. Nobody else, I am the original. Now, Gabby claims she never associated herself with him. However, what do you think Gabby done? Did she stand behind Jessie, her best friend, and support her? No. She decided to make a mockery of the situation. Hold up. Where's my popcorn? OMG, Vine right now? Now I must ask Gabby, how in the fuck is this entertainment for you? And what we have realised through our adventure through the Gabby Hanna fuck hole, that came out wrong. Uh, I meant to say, uh, I don't know what I meant to say. I've come to realise that Gabby Hanna is a big fan of public apologies. To put people on their knees to make them look weak. And the funny thing is, the most time she asks for these public apologies, she's usually the one that's in the fault. <gasps> I know! Oh my, I know, I know. Oh, sh 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 now if you weren't aware, Jessie actually removed all of her videos talking about Gabby as a compromise. Now at the beginning of 2020, Jessie told Gabby what she was willing to compromise. That they both had to sign NDAs so they can't talk about each other and they can't bring anything up. And of course, 
Gabby claimed she was attending a lot of meetings. This is what happened next. So I would take down my videos because I never meant to hurt her. I thought that was a very reasonable compromise to be completely honest and I still think it was. Gabby told me that she had some meetings and she would get back to me. And the next I heard from her was when I got a phone call one night. My sister-in-law was in the hospital and I was cooking her dinner because I'm not gonna get into what she went through. That is her situation, but it was sad. And so I cooked her dinner because I don't know what the fuck to do. So I just started cooking her dinner because I wanted her to eat well when she got back from the hospital. And Gabby called me. My husband looked at me and said do not answer the fucking phone and i answered the phone of course and gabby started screaming at me she told me that my friend jen dent was tweeting and that if i didn't get her to stop tweeting that she had two podcasts that she had filmed filled with our past filled with emails from our past and she was ready to release perfect them. another example of gabby hannah's self-centered universe i know Sorry, Seth. If someone tried giving me this much shit while my sister was in the hospital, I would tell them to brutally fuck themselves. And well, that's not the end of it, ladies and gentlemen. A bit into Jessie's video, she claims that apparently Gabby Hanna was delivering a lot of negativity to Jessie's life. And apparently also, Jessie's roommate will also ask when Gabby's coming to visit, so they wouldn't be there the same time. When you have a person like that, ladies and gentlemen, you, you know, you don't want to be near them. There was clearly a problem with Gabby Hanna. And the weird thing is, a lot of people are saying the same thing. But, let's see what Jessie had to say. A lot of things, but one of the main things that I realized was, I didn't want to be friends with Gabby Hanna anymore. There was no big thing that happened, no big fight that could explain everything. I just felt like our relationship was toxic. I felt like she contributed a lot of negativity into my life. And I'm not just saying this to like be a bitch, but there was multiple times where people in my life who lived with me would tell me, hey, let me know when Gabby's coming over so I can stay in my room. Toxic relationship. As if we haven't heard that many times before with Gabby Hanna. Honestly, if this continues, I might have to delete my channel and resign from life. But yes, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Of course, subscribe to the channel. Leave a like. Comment for the algorithm. Spam them, guys, please. Last video done so shit. I'm going to be uploading more. I always say this, man, but I promise I'm trying so hard. And I'm really trying to get back on the grind. I love you all forever. Peace, guys, for a face reveal. Your man, bro, uh, yeah, I said tell me what you mad for, uh, your man, bro, uh.